Hi, I'm Mark Leggon and welcome to the Last Light School of Photography. Today we're here and we're going to be talking about product photography and we're going to be using the amazing product which is the Studio Cube Light, designed by Last Light of course, that's why we're here. Um, we're going to be looking at the product and how we can use a simple kind of setup to create fantastic images for whether it's web or brochure, whether it's a simple kind of one-off shot or whether it's rattling through a whole load of products. One of the biggest problems we have with product photography is reflections and that's where these come into their own. The reason the Studio Cube Light works so well is that it isolates the product from the background but also its surroundings so anything that is in the vicinity, especially with reflective products, is not going to be seen. If with a window off to the side here, it would see it in the reflection. If it was myself, as far as in black, and you're going to reflect against a chrome surface in here. And that's why we can completely isolate the product, except for a little window for the, cam the camera lens to poke, to poke through to get the shot. So we can completely isolate that product away from any of its surroundings. So as I mentioned, the product's available in two sizes. We've got the 70 centimeter one, which is the kind of the compact version more than anything. It's designed really for the likes of jewelry, small products, and especially if you really are having to work in a small space, perhaps in your home, where you just want to set up the whole, the whole time because you're doing a lot of e-sales e and you just need to rattle through them. Or you've got a client that is really restricted in space when you go to their perhaps their jewellery gallery and you've got to work in that limited kind of spot. So that's where you would opt for the, small, the smaller version. If you like the bigger style where you can arrange the products across, the 100 centimetre version, 100, meters, 100 centimetre square I should say, um, it's, per it's perfect when we need to perhaps lay up two or three small products or one very large product because it gives us the width as well as the height. You, what you've got to remember though with any product photography, perhaps there will be some post-production work, a little bit, because you want to trim out some of the surrounding backgrounds or sides. It's not necessary if you're just going to do one simple large product, but when you've got a group around, around here, perhaps some selective cropping, depends on the lens that you use when you're photographing, uh, is going to have to be used. But otherwise, perhaps even with the likes of an iPhone, you could just go in and take the shot, click, and upload it straight away to the likes of your e-sales site, ready to make some money. How cool is that? The studio you like put, put together in a matter of minutes. So if you're a studio photographer like I am, probably the majority of the time you're going to be using flash. So I'm using my Luminate heads here to give me not only the tungsten kind of lit look as we have running, but also it's going to illuminate the flash when I trigger it to go off. Now flash for some photographers can be quite difficult because you've got to balance the amount of flash coming from one unit to another unit and so on to give you the depth and the shape within the kind of photographs. For a lot of photographers when they're beginning off, they opt for a continuous lighting source. Uh, last light do a range called Radiate and they accept either a fluorescent bulb or a tungsten bulb. They're both very, very bright. As you can see from this image, it's much brighter already from the one on the, the right here, which is being lit by just the, stu the studio heads with their tungsten bulb inside. But of course, these lights are designed to be very bright because that's where you're going to get your exposure from. So if you're struggling at all with the use of flash or perhaps financially you can't stretch to that yet, a continuous light, light source is an easy way into product photography because you get you, well, you basically see and you get whatever is in here, as long as you get your exposure right on camera, of course. Well, that's enough about the product. Let's get on and do some photography. And you can just see on the vase here now, it's reflecting everything that it sees as black. Chrome, I think, is one of the most difficult things to photograph, like glass, um, because it's going to have a reflective surface, but it's also going to give us uh, problems like black areas or coloured areas, because it's a mirror. It's going to reflect what it sees. So in this kind of um, set the setup now, what it's going to do is remove the majority of what is the black er the areas. The only part we're going to have, of course, is where we have the missing panel to begin with. We've got this missing panel here. We are going to see a black stripe running down the middle. We'll talk about that a little bit later on when we move into dealing with reflections. So before we start, the setup is camera on a tripod. Why? It keeps my hands free to be able to move in and out the products themselves. A cable release, because I don't have to handle the camera, I don't have to go through the, view, the viewpoint unless I want to actually double check. Also, I just switch off the manual, uh, sorry, the autofocus, so I'm in manual focus mode now. The reason I do that is that, so the one light, 
And what we can see if we look at this photograph is a bright hi highlight running down the right-hand side of the vase. We've got that solid black line which is coming through this kind of aperture because we don't have that clo the closed up. And if we look to the left-hand side, we still have a little bit of, de of detail, but it's not very much because all it is is a reflective surface. This time, we're sandwich lighting. And this is going to be the light from both sides. So we've got our piece of meat or the vase in the middle. And each side, we've got a slice of bread as in the light. And then when we take the exposure, you can see now the effect is the highlight running down the left-hand side, a highlight running down the right-hand side, and this black mark running down, down the middle. And that is because of this missing panel the whole time. Of course, if I just drop that, down that panel for just one minute, just to get that one shot, and I just cheat a little bit because I don't want to re reposition whilst we're doing the test. You can now see how we've got a much softer line running down the middle of that photograph. It's a great way to be able to fix it. And now we can see that kind of horizon line, that kind of little bit because of the uplighting that we're giving. We haven't lit the background. So start to do those effects. And if I was you, if you're going to run through this kind of scenario like I have, Build a little contact sheet up for yourself. Why? Because then you can see exactly what the effect you're going to get from each light, even before you start to photograph any product. You might not have as many lights as me. You might only have one or two or three, or three lights with it. So you're going to have to decide on what each of those lights is going to do before, before you start. When you see a photograph of a product, it should feel like you can pick it up. If it doesn't feel like you can pick it up, it's non-three-dimensional. -three for today, we haven't looked at trying to cap capture the top of the vase and everything else because I want, what I wanted to concentrate on this shot was just how the lights reflect off each other. In the real world, if this was a shot that we were doing for a client, for a website or for a catalogue, I would want to have to have a little bit of an angle down to be able to see the lip here. And now we've got three lights running. We've got one on the left, one underneath and one at the back. So as we can see with that shot, it's pretty good. You know, we've got that underneath light, we've got the back light, those give us our three-dimensional separation. Plus we've got now our specularity, some kind of shape or direction of light coming from the left-hand side. That's given us this lovely specularity running down the left side. But then we want to bring a little bit of rim, just kind of the, hi the highlight, just on that specularity, just onto the top itself. Now you should be able to see that on the top here, we've just allow allowed ourselves to have a little bit of a specularity, subtlety, that's the main point with it. Now let's, um, we're going to go back to switching on all of the five lights, okay? Remember that is one left and right, one above, one behind and one from beneath. So that's our five lights. So the first shot is that five lights. Let's do that. So that's the effect that we have with the five lights. We can see we've got that lovely kind of black line running down in the middle, but perhaps you don't want that. And that's where this front panel really comes into its own. But now if you look, when we take the photograph, you'll see it's become quite white and bland and, and everything's just gone all around and we've lost that kind of true three-dimensional effect. Never be afraid to just lift out one of these corners, <laughs> it's a quick cheat, just to give us a little bit of a stripe or a black line running down a certain part of the photograph. And it's a way that we can start to introduce some shade or shadow into the item before we introduce the likes of a piece of black card or whatever. So we've made it difficult for ourselves with this setup when we're going to discuss in reflections. Uh, we've got a chrome stag's head, which is a kind of a bookend, and then we've got a small vase, a mirrored vase, uh, with glass behind and with some small flowers in, in there. I'm not so much worried about it as a whole pro product shot. I chose them because they'll give us difficulties, and that's the great thing. I think if you have a, pro a problem, it's easier to show you how to sol solve it than just jump to the straight to the great shot. One of the benefits of the Studio Cube Light is the ability to light from beneath. We've covered that twice today, looking at the stag and the vase. But um, when we're looking at a product here like this toy car, um, it's naturally when we light from overhead to illuminate the inside of the vehicle, the bonnet and so on. Um, that's doing our one, one job here, but it's always going to create that shadow underneath. Let's just take, take that shot for a minute, just so you can see it on screen. 
Now you can see it's, it's okay, there's overall illumination to it, it's quite nice, but it's, it doesn't really kind of give us a bite, it doesn't give us a three-dimensional kind of effect. Just onto the back part of the light here, so the, the light fur furthest away from us at the front of the car, that's where I want to give our specularity, and that is why I'd add in that third light. Just to give us that little touch of light, to give a three-dimensional effect through specularity, because what we always want to do, of course, is create a 3D image, no matter what. Okay, let's shoot some glass. Um, we're going to cheat now, and even though the product was really not designed to do what we're about to do, <laughs> we can get some great reflections. So you can see, I just removed the translucent kind of fabric or the plastic that comes in to give us that lovely curve. But if you want to move away from just a, cur a curvature, by using the Perspex base here to give some reflection, we can really change the results. And you can see we've got a really nice effect. And if I just pull the, cap the camera back a little bit more to get some more of his reflection, you can see how nice that would look in a catalogue, giving us some really great shots. There's another quick tip for you uh, with the Studio Cube light. Uh, the great thing about it is the aperture is just big enough for us to be able to extend a boom arm or kind of studio stand through to be able to clamp on the likes of a branch or some kind of product that we want to feature in the photograph. Especially when we need products to drop or dangle because we need to let gravity have their hold on them like material. Another quick way is to also support the product through the likes of the material above. Um, to do that we just lay a small piece of wood across the top or a stand. We tie some uh, fishing wire to that which is almost perfectly clear, it's so thin. And then we tie the product to it. We just feed, we feed it through the material just with a needle and then we tie it onto the product itself. And it's a great way to have some animation in a natural kind of hanging mode for a product. I'm just using the reflector to just bounce in a little bit more in the specularity of the uh, light itself because I want a, a soft light throughout the whole thing. But I just need that little kind of crispness to the, bau the bauble at the same time. So without that, let's have a look at a stag's head and how we increase the contrast within the image by using some black card to give us control of where the shadow is going to be laid. Okay, quick tip. Chrome, take the photograph. But if it's got too much of that washed out and the lack of the three-dimensional the three pieces of card, not by, by last light, I'm sorry, you can get them anyway at all. And all we do is just position them within the frame, just add a shot to create the black line or the shadow that we want to run within the frame. Because all we're trying to do is really give it some point of texture and reflection. You might have to add two or three, even four, little black edges within the scene to create it. So it's quite funny in a way, because you think about the Studio Cube light, it's designed to give us this completely 360 degree softbox, this wraparound of light, very, very diffused light, the light source. But as photographers, even though we need that, we also want the facility to be able to go in and create the, co the contrast and the kind of separation to the product each time. So think about what you're trying to achieve with the, diff the different products. If you're going to rattle through a whole host of photographs during the course of a day, line them up in their kind of product line. So if you've got a load of glass to do, try and do those out of the way. If you've got a load of ceramics where they've still got a bit of reflectancy, try and do those. Chrome and mirrors, make sure you try and do those together. Unfortunately, at times when you're doing big, ca big catalogue runs or web shoots, you've got to do them in the, or the order that you give them because they'll all have a numeric on their base or whatever. They'll all have their label there. So you've got to do, uh, do that. But I think you'll agree, by the end of this long kind of tutorial for, la for Luster Light, you've seen how ver versatile this great little product is in the Studio Cube Light. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm Mark Claywon for the Last Light School of Photography. We'll see you on the next one. Bye. -bye.